Hello and welcome to an Affinity Revolution tutorial. My name is Ezra Anderson, and today we're going to use Affinity Photo for iPad to take this lovely photo and apply a pop-out effect to it. If you'd like to follow along with the same image that I'll be using, I've included a download link in the video description. The first thing we need to do to make our pop-out effect is to make a selection of the girl. To make any selection, we need to come to the selection persona. For this example, the smart selection brush will be our best option. Using this tool, we just need to paint a selection across the girl. While making your selection, remember that you can change the mode from add to subtract in the contextual toolbar if you ever select too much. After you've made a decent selection of the girl, we're going to use the Refine Selection tool to make our selection even better. In particular, we want to paint across the edges of her hair to refine those selections. As you can see, Affinity does a great job refining selections. I'm just going to paint over a couple more spots of her hair to help refine our selection even more. We now have a great selection going around the girl's hair. However, you'll notice that some parts of our selection aren't looking very good. In particular, if you look near her hand, our selection is a little weak. But don't worry, for this effect, you don't need a perfect selection around the entire person. Just make sure your selection is looking good for the upper half of the person you're making a selection of. After you're done refining your selection, you can press on the check mark in the contextual toolbar. Now that we're done making our selection, we're going to come back to the photo persona. We want to make a duplicate copy of the girl. Because we already have her selected, all we need to do is tap once with two fingers anywhere on the screen and then press duplicate. Then we no longer need our selection, so we can tap with two fingers again and press deselect. If you look in the Layer Studio, you can now see that we have one layer with just the girl on it. The next thing we're going to do is make the card that the girl is going to be popping out of. To do this, we'll use the Rectangle tool. With this tool, just click and drag to make a rectangle. We want to make it so this rectangle has an outline going around it, but no color in the center. To do this, we'll first come to the Color Studio, and then lower the opacity of the fill color to 0%. Then at the top left of the Color Studio, we're going to select the black outline color and change that color to white. We're going to need to make the outline of this rectangle much bigger. Unfortunately, we don't have that option in the contextual toolbar when we have the rectangle tool out. Instead, we need to select the pen tool. When we have the pen tool out and the rectangle selected, we can change the width of the rectangle in the contextual toolbar. We now need to distort this rectangle to give it a 3D perspective appearance. To do this, we'll use a perspective filter. As with all other filters, we'll come to the Filter Studio, and then scroll down until we find Perspective. With the Perspective filter applied to the rectangle, we're going to click and drag on the corner handles to give this rectangle a 3D perspective. After you've moved the rectangle, you can press on the check mark in the contextual toolbar to confirm your transformation. Now we're going to come to the Layer Studio and click and drag on the duplicate copy of the girl to place her above the rectangle. Our pop-out effect is really starting to come along. What we need to do next is remove all of the background from the picture. To do this, we want to have the original picture selected inside the Layer Studio. Then we're going to come to the Selection Persona and make a selection of just the area that's inside the pop-out effect. The easiest way to do this is to use our Polygonal Marquee Tool. 
Then we just need to change the type from freehand to polygonal. Now I'll pinch to zoom in to one of the corners of the rectangle and click once to lay down my first point. Now using two fingers, I'll scroll down and click once again to lay down a second point. I'll repeat this process for the other two corners. To finish your selection, just click on the original point that you laid down. Now we can tap twice with two fingers to zoom back out. With our selection made, we can now apply a mask to the background image. Just press on the mask icon inside the layer studio and then press new mask layer. Then we no longer need our selection, so we can tap once with two fingers and press deselect. Our pop-out effect is just about done, but there's a few finishing touches that I think would really enhance this picture. The first is a background. To make a background, we're going to come back to the photo persona, and then using the rectangle tool, we'll click and drag to make a rectangle going across the entire picture. Our rectangle is still set to have no fill, just as we specified earlier in this video. To fix this, we just need to come to the Color Studio, and then we need to raise the opacity of the fill color. You can see right now that we're working with the stroke and not the fill because the color is already set to 100% opacity. If I change the color inside the color wheel, you'll also notice that nothing changes. Instead, we need to select the other white circle and then bring its opacity back up to 100%. Then inside the Layer Studio, we're going to click and drag to place this rectangle on the bottom. To make the background a little more interesting, let's give it a gradient. To do this, we'll use the Gradient tool and then just click and drag to make a gradient. In the Contextual Toolbar, we'll change this gradient from Solid to Radial. To make the gradient a little more noticeable, we can change the gray color stop to black. To do this, we'll just come to the Color Studio and change its color. And finally, I think we need to center our pop-out effect. To do this, we'll come to the Layer Studio and then select the top layer. We'll also select the two layers beneath it by swiping to the left on those layers. Now we can put all of them inside of a group by pressing on the folder icon in the Layer Studio. Then with the Move tool, we can reposition this group wherever we want. We've now finished our beautiful pop-out effect.